Hello everyone, welcome down to Finch Friday, which is your weekly, which has not been so weekly, Q&A. I used to do these Q&As all the time, and to be honest, maybe slacked off just a touch. So whenever I ask for questions on social media, I always get loads and loads of questions coming in, but generally there's also a bit of a theme that goes on. So whenever I do post that question for questions, people come back and there's always about five or six people asking the same question. So I'm gonna be taking the most popular ones and putting those in this video, whilst also also taking a very technical question, so about technique and equipment or something to improve your game. So this question has been asked in a few different forms. First one by KDG1. In your opinion, who is the best YouTube golfer or the one who always impresses you the most? Who is the best YouTube golfer, best social media player? It, you know, there's a lot of questions about this. Now, the first thing to say is that at this moment in time, you guys are pretty much spoiled as far as creators on YouTube making some really good stuff. And obviously, I've not played with everybody. From my circle of direct YouTube friends, so I'm talking about kind of Rick, Carter, Fryer, those lads who I played the most golf with, I would probably say that at the moment, I am the best player out of those lads but that's mainly because I'm the one who's practicing and playing the most, maybe apart from Carter. It's an impossible question to answer in respects that if we were all playing very consistently, if we're all playing consistently, I'd probably have to go to Fryer because he was the one who had the lowest handicap when we actually all turned pro, so he was off plus two, I think. But there's this huge, huge thing about actually playing competitively as well, because for me, if you wanna judge how good a golfer is, it's a lot different than if you're just playing around with your mates than if you're playing in competition. I always I, don't know, there you go. I would always judge the players who are actually playing the best and who are the best golfers by the ones who can actually do it in competition because it is a completely different environment to if you're just doing a course vlog or if you're just having to mess around. But guys, jump down into those comments below and let me know who you think is the best YouTube golfer, who has the best swing and who generally is the best player. But if everyone was playing, if everyone was practicing uh, to the extreme, so if everyone was trying to put as much time into it as possible and still playing on competitions, I'm not sure because there are people out there making videos who are better than me or were better than me when they were practicing properly anyway. Uh, and I've still not kind of reached their level. So I definitely wouldn't be if everyone was still practicing and playing as much as they could do. So a question here about clearing the hips and clearing the shoulders coming through the point of impact. Now there's a great little drill that you can use just using a couple of alignment sticks. You don't even have to leave the safety and warmth of your own home. You just need to make sure that you've got an alignment stick. First of all, some trousers with some belt buckles on kind of does help here. And I'm gonna put this little one through my belt buckles here. If I can make this look graceful. I'm just gonna leave a little bit more sticking out of the left side. This is a nice little short one as opposed to this big one. I'm gonna get myself set up into a posture position as I would be over the ball. I'm gonna turn my shoulders back, get my left shoulder pointing down the ground. You'll notice here how my hips open on the way back as well. Don't try and restrict these too much. You wanna get that little bit of hip turn on the way back as well. If you restrict that, you're gonna probably restrict your shoulder turn depending on the level of flexibility that you actually have. So I'm in that setup position. I'm gonna turn my shoulders back. I'm gonna get them away 90 degrees. I'm gonna get my left shoulder pointing down at the ground. And then as I come through, I'm gonna turn my left hip. I'm gonna turn my shoulders. And what I'm going to imagine is this is going to be the point of my impact. And you can see here that my shoulders and my hips, they have synced up. So they are pointing in the same direction. So you're synced up with the body opening and the hips opening. You're going to be able to control that club face using the body turns rather than any flash speed with the hands. A lot of people get confused by weight transfer. You wanna have your pressure moving left, you want it pressing down left as well. But if you slide and you get ahead of the ball, that's actually gonna cause you to pivot back and lean back to try and get that ball up in the air. So a good exercise while you're doing that drill, turning back, put that pressure down into your left foot, but don't slide. So pressure down, get that rotation, and try and open up that body. So you've done that drill a few times, pressure down into that left side, and then just try and open up those body positions. And if you can do that, you're gonna have that more control over the club face. So just one more time. So just that little swing up to the top, pressure down into that left side, and then open up that body 
towards the target. So many questions, and I mean so many questions, on what my favourite golf course is. It's kind of what is your favourite top five, favourite course in the UK, in the US, and all the rest of it. And I'm going to break it down and say my top five golf courses. Now, I have been super lucky right, within the last few years. I mean, I've managed to get to go and play some amazing golf courses, and I feel so blessed to have been able to do that. But hop down into the comments below, guys, and let me know what your favourite courses are that you've played. Rank it in a top five if you want as well. So number one in my mind is Royal Aberdeen. Now I played Royal Aberdeen last year with Eric Anders Lang and the front nine there was just unbelievable. It was so, so good. And there's so many courses around Aberdeen which I've not yet played, which also people absolutely love. If you remember when I went up to play with Eric, I, uh, I, I went the wrong way down the motorway to begin with and I missed out on playing, what was it? Yeah, but that front nine at Royal Aberdeen is just, it's just superb. It is beautifully presented. It looks fantastic. It, it just, oh, it's a beautiful links course with some really cool dunes and it's just well framed, but it's very playable as well. I like to go on a links course and enjoy the experience, enjoy the challenge, but I don't like courses that kind of beat me up. I mean, what's the point? You know, it's a game, you've got to enjoy it. But I definitely need to go back there and play it again because I've only played it once and I don't know if it was just kind of the passage of time, the absence has definitely made the heart grow fonder. But number one, I would say Royal Aberdeen. And number two, I would put St. Andrew's Old Course. Now I've literally just come back from playing the Old Course for a second time. I would love to go back and play it again in um, not so much 50 mile an hour winds. <laughs> You're obviously always going to get wind around the course, but boy, it has been blustery the last few times I've played there. But here's the thing with the old course, and a lot of people have said this, you know, I'm not the first. The, the actual golf course itself, it isn't as dramatic. Once you get outside the 1st, the 17th, and the 18th, it's not as a dramatic a links course as, say, Royal, Royal Aberdeen, which is number one. But I would say that what St. Andrews has is obviously the history, the setting, that unique 1st and 18th hole finishing in and out of the town, and the fact that you are walking on turf, which has been played on for centuries, centuries and centuries. And it's that location, it's that sense of history that you get. And the fact is, once you play it more than once, you start to see a few more of the intricacies about that golf course. You start to see the fact that if you go over to one side of the fairway as opposed to the other one, depending on where the pins are because of the greens, especially the double greens, which are so big. So three and four, I would put two courses, which I've just played in Northern Ireland. So number three, I would put Port Rush, Royal Port Rush, and number four, I would put Royal County Down. If I went back and I played Royal County Down again, because it's the first time I played those two courses, I might actually put Royal County Down higher up because the thing with County Down is there are quite a few blind tee shots and you really need to know where you're going on occasion. I hit two really good drives, exactly where I was aiming, which I couldn't find the ball once I got over the hill. And that put a slight dampener in my mind because I was like, God, just hit a good shot. And it kind of left me with a, a slight feeling of disappointment, if that makes sense. That setting, it, it's one of the most beautiful courses on earth. The way, it, oh, it's just, it's stunning. It's breathtaking. And Port Rush, which had just held the open when I played it, the architecture there, the way that it's shaped, the challenge that it gives. And then when you get down to that fifth hole, it's, it's just beautiful. It's an epic, epic setting. So you'll notice a theme here. These are all links courses. Now I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. I'm gonna put a number five, I'm gonna put a number five at Dare Manor. Now my top five kind of switches and changes a lot, but a Dare Manor for me, because it's so perfect the way it's presented, because of the, the fact that it is just such a epic sculpture of a golf course, it kind of really sets it aside from a lot of other courses that I've played, but I could throw in a number of courses here. Sunningdale Old, which I played, was amazing, but I played it in just freezing, horrible conditions, so I didn't get the full experience of that. Wentworth I absolutely loved, but I don't think that's as good as Sunningdale, even though the conditioning was absolutely amazing. And it's great because of the courses that I played over the last few years, I'm just so blessed to be able to actually think about them and actually put them in some kind of incoherent order. So guys, thank you so, so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and this Q&A format. Remember to get down into those comments below and let me know your thoughts. And please consider hitting that subscribe button and that little bell. I'd love, to, I'd love you to be made aware of when I release new videos. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this Q&A format. I'll see you next time.